delusions. A confrontation over what to do with the president's body. Oh, the confrontation. That was one of the biggest things that happened at Parkland. That's what caused all of this, not allowing Texas law to be in place. Our pathologist should have done the autopsy at Parkland. And he tried to. And he tried to follow the Texas law. And the Secret Service, they formed, looked like a herd of locusts, a phalanx around the coffin. And Mrs. Kennedy was in the middle with her left hand on the casket. And they were then coming out into the hall. And all of a sudden, there, our forensic pathologist stopped them. Dr. Earl Rose said, halt. This man has to have an autopsy here in the state of Texas. It'll only take 45 minutes. And they would not hear of it. They wanted to get that body out of Dallas. Some of the America's finest path uh, forensic pathologists, medical people who perform autopsies and who have worked for the federal government in the past on in critical cases in the Washington, D.C. area, stood by their telephones that evening when the president's body was returned to Washington, D.C., but they were never called. Instead, the individuals in charge of the autopsy selected two administrators individuals who had rarely performed autopsies to come in and perform the, one of the most important autopsies in this century. The president got a, an autopsy that wouldn't have been acceptable for a Bowery bomb, but Oswald got a, an autopsy fitting of a president. There aren't real questions about Oswald's autopsy, and there are nothing but questions about the president's autopsy. Right. He died of a gunshot wound in the brain of a bullet right through the head. John Kennedy was obviously shot from the front. Everybody knows it. Virtually everybody in Dealey Plaza uh, rushed to the grassy knoll where they heard the sounds. It came from a fence uh, between the book depository and the railroad track. From behind the overpass over there, a uh, triple overpass, Right over about 20 or 30 feet from the other end of that little picket fence. And it sounded like it came from the left and in front of us, towards the wooden fence. And there was a puff of smoke that came underneath the trees. We all three seen, four seen about the same thing as the shot. The smoke came from behind the hedge. And then as the cart got directly in front of us, well, a gunshot apparently from behind us hit the president inside side of the temple. Did, did you, do you think the first gunshot came uh, from behind you too? I, I think it came from the same location. I, uh, apparently back up on the, the uh, uh, mall. When I stated it, I felt like the second and third shots could not have been fired from the same rifle. Uh, they um, reminded me that I wasn't an expert. I viewed the autopsy pictures. They had the frontal part of the cerebrum here in the skull out. So when the picture was taken, you, you think they pulled the skin back up over this wound? That's the only thing I can postulate because the back of his head was gone. This was a huge hole. Mm -hmm. It was on the right. It was nine to 10 centimeters across and you could look right into the brain. Crenshaw. hole is at the front of the head. See something else. This is just a, almost a personal object, a, a question. Are you pretty comfortable today with the notion that someone was firing at President Kennedy somewhere from the front? Yes. Are you equally comfortable or are you not comfortable with the notion that there is forgery of some sort in the official documents of this? I feel there probably is. I certainly could not be um, you know, held down to saying exactly how that is by, or even approximately how it is perhaps, but I feel that there has been some kind of uh, attempt to cover up what was going on. The witness saw. Was there corroboration for a shot from the front? 
Dallas clothing manufacturer Abraham Zapruder filmed the motorcade as it drove down Elm Street. It was about halfway down there, I had a shot. And he slumped to the side like this. Then I had another shot or two, I couldn't say what it was, one or two. And I saw his head practically open up, all blood and everything, and I kept on shooting. Two days after the assassination, Life magazine bought the infamous Zapruder film. Its moving images were not shown to the American public for 12 years. The most obvious thing you extract from the film is that the head moves backward, and that suggests a shot from the right front. It is unknown exactly what the film suggested to the members of the Warren Commission, since their report failed to even mention Kennedy's violent reaction to the headshot. That's right, folks. The Warren Commission never even mentioned the headshot. Think about that. It was the Zapruder film that caused the second major investigation because of the Z Zapruder film. Because of that headshot, and, as, and the uh, Warren Commission never even commented on it. Just pathetic. And uh, Abraham Zapruder, that's what he, he told the Warren Commission. You saw, he saw the president hit on the right side of the head. And you thought perhaps the shot has come, shots came from behind you. Well, yes. So, uh, that was his testimony to the Warren Commission. There was one little problem, though. He had a camera in front of his eyes. Let's continue. Let me show you, to my best recollection, what the wound looked like to me that day in trauma room one. Before each doctor looked at the photos, he described the wounds he had seen back in 1963. I could see the president's uh, head wound quite well, and um, I was probably looking into a wound that was on the lateral or the side part of the head and the back part of the head. Uh, it would be this portion of the head right here. As I remember, it's like this that there was a big wound, big deficit in his skull and the temporal parietal area. Now, here's what the Warren Commission in their autopsy, they claim the autopsy showed. A small little wound in the back of the head. Yet on the Mormon photo, as we go in, take a closer look, I did many years ago. Uh, something very unusual you see here. Here's somebody else that is, has examined this. Inconsistencies within, and the pristine Mary Mormon photograph allowed me to go in and actually measure the wound optically without image processing. As we go into the wound and as we expand the wound and magnify it, you can see that the pixel elements or each one of these little dots is represented by dark squares or light squares. Now, if there were no wound in the rear of President Kennedy's head, all of the squares would be the basic reflective value or the basic shade of gray that his normal hair coloring would be on this day. Every time, every time in my years of experience with this, when there is a concave or convex area that is a deformation of the overall image, there is absolutely no question that the case is as it goes darker under this situation, that this is going from an, an area on the top of President Kennedy's head down into an extremely deep hole because the entrance wound that supported this exit wound was fired from the right frontal area of President Kennedy and it exited through the rear. Instead of trying to find shooters or gunmen in the photograph. Well, I have 
tried to find shooters uh, in, the, in the photographs, and I found a few other things, too. Now, before these images were made, uh, were found, uh, the Warren Commission defenders had some, some little hope, some case, <laughs> to keep fending off reality and truth. But even, even with this truth before their very eyes, they're still trying to d d deny this fact. Now, is this the only image I've got of uh, the back of the president's head? No. I also looked somewhere else, thanks to uh, Robert Gordon's, Groden's uh, enhancements of the Zubruder film. Uh, they were zoomed in some. I've zoomed in either f further, and uh, this is what I see. So we have two independent photos here, the Mormon photo in the Zipruder film, which both show this large wound in the back of the president's head. These, this is not words. This is hard evidence, hard photographic evidence of an exit wound in the back of the president's head. Now they can deny that. They they could deny anything. Large hole is at the front of the head. See something else. This is just a, almost a personal observation. A question: Are you pretty comfortable today with the notion that someone was firing at President Kennedy somewhere from the front? Yes. Are you equally comfortable, or are you not comfortable with the notion that there is forgery of some sort? in the official documents of this? I feel there probably is. I certainly could not be, um, you know, held down to saying exactly how that is, by, or even approximately how it is, perhaps. But I feel that there has been some kind of uh, attempt to cover up what was going on. And some right, believe right that one of these shadows may be an assassin standing behind the fence. Some believe that one of these shadows may be an assassin standing behind the fence. As you can see, I was uh, taking extreme close-ups of that many years ago. One of these shadows... This blob right here that doesn't appear to be like much, just... Uh, Well, anyhow, I was taking a lot closer look here. Let's see if you see what I saw. a face here, a face here. What really caught my eye was this upside down stripe here. I couldn't figure out what that could have been. So I was looking a little closer. So that's a little closer up of that image right here. As you can see, this is on the, uh, this is caught, picked up on television as they zoomed in on the Mormon photo. This was in a book, double page enlargement. So you get the gist of it. I was looking there and let's take a nice Here's some of the images I've extracted from that. How about a colorized version? One 
One face there, one face here. How about a little larger view? And by the way, well, I got to do it this way. I got all kinds of images here. Yes, there it is. Here's an independent close-up somebody did. I don't even know who it was, but this was a digitally enhanced uh, version of the Mormon photo. Uh, they never even noticed this. I made a uh, enlargement and I put it up here in the front. They were looking back here. Back along here. And that may not, I know it's hard to see, I didn't see it for several minutes. And once I started putting the pieces together, once the brain starts putting the pieces together, like I say, all I was looking at was this upside down V. Let's see, there should be something. Yes. That upside down V. And then I noticed there were a few others. There was this, what appears to be a circle here, just above that. And then I started putting the pieces together. You start seeing the faces. Once you start seeing the faces, understand this is the left arm. channel that's the close up again I'm losing my where's the color there's the colorized So there's definitely something very unusual there, <laughs> to say the least. And when you put it put it all together, uh, I can find that one again. Well, anyways, here's an here's an even more extreme close-up. Let me see if I move that in a little. Now, this is very curious that at that distance, <laughs> I mean, it's picking up this, and it does look like some writing much similar to this that's a, and that's a very long distance but anyways I can't get this to work so anyhow it's very curious that uh, if I can find that one It's very curious that you'd have two images like that found in this one photograph. And not only that, <laughs> but an image like that also. Uh, now, Anyone who thinks of the light, lights and shadows, uh, there's always a possibility of lights and shadows, but those are the damnedest lights and shadows I've ever seen. And as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> this makes more sense than anything.
We continue now with the JFK assassination part 8 and the smoking guns. Now what the Warren Commission defenders want you to believe is that these trained professional doctors here at Dallas who dealt with gunshot wounds almost on a daily basis they couldn't tell the back of the head president's head from the top of his head that's what you, they want you to believe folks and you can believe them if you want to because there's no law against it believe whatever fairy tales you want to believe and perhaps this explains why the woman standing nearly right next to Mary Mormon filming the motorcade why that film has never been seen Yes, Lee Oswald certainly looked guilty of a lot of things in this case. But when you look at his demeanor, it's either one of two things. He was either guilty in covering it up, or he had, he had infiltrated a plot to murder the president and got caught in the middle as the patsy. One of the two things happened here. And as far as the uh, Warren Commission, uh, here's the testimony the doc Dallas doctors gave him. The uh, FBI agents that were present there at the autopsy reported as well as surgery of the head area, namely in the top of the skull. And the Dallas doctors uh, were telling the Warren Commission, along with uh, many others, the right side of the head, the back of the head, posterior skull occupital region, right part, posterior part, and on and on and on, every one of every single one of them. And not only them, not only uh, Zapruder and the rest, but there were many other witnesses there. The Newmans. Here's a couple more. Herschel Jacks, a Texas Highway Patrolman. Before the president, a body was covered. It appeared that the bullet had struck him above the right ear or near the temple. Emmett Houston, who was another closest eyewitnesses, he looked like it hit him somewhere along a bit, a little bit behind the ear and a little bit above the ear. Here is Clint Hill, the Secret Service agent that went with the president to the hospital. What did he observe? The right rear portion of his head was missing. It was laying in the rear seat of the car. So now, what the Warren Commission was told all of that, they only had two choices. Explore it and find out the reasons why, or deny it, and falsify, and falsify their report, which they did. Right here. In the Warren report, the autopsy disclosed a large head wound observed at Parkland. Pure forgery. That's a falsification. That's what they've gotten away with. You know, there's uh, so much... This thing reeks of conspiracy so much, and there's so much of it, one hardly knows where to start here. Well, let's start with the Warren Commission and their report. To begin with, the biggest case for conspiracy can be found in the Warren Report itself. But where it can't be found is in the Warren Commission's collusion, con conclusions or collusions. 
that you won't find this breath of it. And perhaps this could explain why Lee Harvey Oswald would be assassinated in the Dallas Police Department.